Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Dr. Robert Marks Show. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Dr. Robert Marks Show, Dr. Robert Marks. Dr. Marks, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. I am excited in particular because I am a retired uh, United States Air Force uh, officer myself, uh, but my achievements pale in comparison to Dan. Dan, welcome to the uh, to the program. Uh, we are honored to have you. Your achievements and awards in the Air Force that I recognize are just heroic. Uh, but I understand you have a new book, The Vanishing Act. Um, That's about good of you to say. Movies. You've been to medical school, and I haven't, so your accomplishments are are up there as well. Yeah, Vanishing Act is my, uh, I think it's my eighth book, and it deals with the the one plane from the Doolittle Raid that went to Russia when all the rest of them went to China after they bombed Japan. Yes, a lot of people are not familiar with the Doolittle Raid. Can you give a quick overview and then focus in on that lone uh, one that went on to Vladivostok? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, uh, this is 1942, a very dark year for the United States and the world, and we wanted to send a message to Japan and our allies that the United States was still in the war and fighting. So this mission was dreamed up to launch land-based, long-range Army bombers from an, from an aircraft carrier to hit Japan because the Japanese didn't think that could be done. So that's what they did. And then afterwards they were all supposed to go to China except one of them didn't. It turned right and went northwest and headed for the Soviet Union, and that's what this book is about, why it did wow. that. Okay, and, and there had to be a lot of research, Dan. You must be a huge historian, right? <laughs> well, I've gotten that way. I'm going to have to get a bigger house because this one's full of books. Yeah, isn't that crazy? This is the thing, and I'm going to go Dr. Mark's rights as well. Um, the thing that you guys do is in able to create things. You, re you read so much. And then you love to just get into the workshop and write, right? Yeah. And, you know, the, the intriguing part is you never know where that idea is going to come from. You know, in my case, it's usually while I'm researching another book, I come across some obscure detail. And by now I've kind of figured out what publishers like and what will sell. And, I'll, you know, I'll make a note of it and come back to it, you know, because you, you think to yourself, gosh, that's a great story. I, I never heard of that or I didn't know enough about this. That's what I'll try next. What's very interesting, and I'm going to go back to Dr. Marks with a question, is my workshop is doing uh, about 30, 40 shows a week for my uh, radio show to put all my interviews on for five hours plus more. And I just love <laughs> interviewing. And it's like, what do you do? You're live streaming every second. I'm like, oh, oh well. All right, go ahead, Dr. Marks, for your next question. Well, Dan, Bernie, question is, do you have any insights into why that one lone plane flew onto the Soviet Union? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I I uncovered through talking to the a couple of descendants, uh, Hap Arnold's grandson and the, the son of one of the pilots, uh, plus, you know, all the research and some declassified material that I got a hold of. And I know exactly why they went. And it was all planned. It wasn't accidental. And the reasons behind it and how all that happened is pretty much what most of the book is about, as well as as well as historical context, I imagine you enjoy that as well. I found over the years that I find it fascinating, and most of the, the people who read my books find it very interesting, you know, to explain the how and why of a given time and place and why these things mattered at the time. You know, it's very, very interesting. It's interesting that how you guys uncover things. How did you uncover this and find out this in your research? Well, a lot of it, you know, once you get all the pieces you know, on a big map and you look at it and, and and I I put myself back into a cockpit and say, All right, what makes sense? What would I have done? What is what are the possible reasons for doing this? You know, I did that with uh was it Vengeance a couple books ago about who killed Yamamoto. You know, for, for eighty years there's been a controversy and just by drawing it out and, and putting my pilot hat back on, I figured out exactly who did it and, and how they did it and then wrote about it. And I did kind of the same thing with this one. Well, I look forward to reading the book personally. Uh, but uh, with the war in Ukraine that we have going, uh, you have insights in being a, a fighter pilot. The F-16s, are they going to make a big impact uh, on the uh, Ukraine war? Well, they'll make a big impact if it's done right. I mean, it's not just a matter of 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 having the plane you gotta you gotta be able to keep the plane flying you were in the air force you know that and you've got to have the right people flying it you know you could sit me down in front of a beautiful steinway piano that doesn't mean i can play it well 
right? And uh, if, yeah, we use that in, and, in uh, surgery all the time. Uh, but are are the Ukrainian pilots capable of that aircraft? Are they trainable? Well, there, there's there's a first batch of them being trained now in several countries, including this one, and they were all former MiG or Sukhoi pilots. So they're good pilots, but they don't have much experience in the F-16. So, you know, there are a couple of, of options we've proposed to help with that. And so far, you know, everything is moving, you know, at the speed of molasses in winter. So uh, I certainly hope it goes well. It could really make a difference and turn the tide if it's done right. So we'll see. You know, it's it, – go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Marks. No, for, for us who are not familiar with the capabilities of, of the F-16, what, what does the F-16 offer uh, that can help the Ukraine – defend their border and maybe even go into the uh, Russia? Well, the first thing that it, it offers is a chance for true air superiority, which means, you know, obviously if you control the skies, then you can move at will upon the ground. And, and that's not something that's happened yet. It can also do close air support and support their, their tanks and armored vehicles, if, you know, if and when they decide to advance. It could kill surface-to-air missiles like I did. You know, it can do anything, but again, it's got to be flown correctly. Wow. Okay. Um. But back to the. Let's just jump back to the book and like, is this the, the whole process of what has the feedback been so far about your book? People have read it. Oh, everybody! Everybody loves it, which is which is good. <laughs> I always I always like to hear that. Um. Uh. You know, people are always I think intrigued by. Uh, historical mysteries or anomalies, and that this one certainly was. And I don't accept anything at face value, and I didn't accept the the story about why this plane went to Russia. And so clearing that up and showing why it really did is, is the exciting part of the book. So, Dr. Marks, you flew as well. You didn't never told me that part of the story. Well, no, I was... <laughs> A long story short, uh, I was in the medical corps. I did have a, uh, a rating in undersea uh, reconnaissance. So I went down rather than up. <laughs> anyway, uh, Dan, how do we, how do people get a copy of your book? Is this available on Amazon? Oh yeah. All of them are on Amazon. They're in all the bookstores, Barnes and Noble. You know, I was going through an airport the other day and saw one in one of the airport bookstores. So, uh, you know, at, like anything else today, uh, Amazon's probably the quickest and easiest. If people like it, do me a favor and, and review it. If you don't like it, don't say anything. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but, but there, haven't, there haven't been any of those, so I, I think people will like it. It's it's not a controversial book. It's just a book to, to clear up a historical mystery, and, and we did that. So, so Dan, uh, what's the title, of your, book, uh, ahead, uh, the title of your book about uh, the uh, killing of Yamamoto? Uh, it's called Vengeance. Because that was Operation Vengeance, and for 80 years, another guy claimed credit for it. And once I got into it and, and drew it all out and, you know, put myself back into the cockpit, uh, there's no way that guy could have done it. So I gave credit where credit is due, and and the right the right guy now gets the credit for the mission. Now, like, to finish up thinking about specifically, uh, you're going to keep writing, right, Dan? Another book you're probably already writing, is that correct? Uh I just signed a contract on another book, and this one is like Valor. It's not about flying; it's about spies. So it should be very, very interesting. What do you? So, what is your ultimate goal as an author? Where do you do you want to see a lot of your any of your stuff become movies or documentaries, or what are your thoughts as a writer? Oh, I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see a couple of them made into movies. In fact, we're talking to one production company now about one of the books but you know there's several of them that i think lend themselves to to a, a mini series format or even a even a, a a regular motion picture so i hope that comes to pass i'd love to see it let me give you a tip is a lot of these top authors and you are a top author get them optioned versus let's go ahead and try to create this ourselves find the right production company and go 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 to the market where they want to make the film you know, that's the key thing that I'm hearing in stories out there when content is being so difficult to finally, where they want to option you, yet, guess what? That's what it happens, and then that's the end. And we don't want that for your stories, that's for sure. Well, that, that's, that, that's exactly how it works. You know, they, they buy the option to do it, which is, which is fine. You get, you know, you get paid either way. 
but I'd rather see it get made into a movie just because a lot of these stories, I think, are stories that people need to know about. It's part of our history, and besides, you know, they, they, they make you feel proud to be an American and to feel good about things, and in the world today, with the way things are, I think that's a very welcome change. All right. Well, thanks, Dan. We appreciate it, sir. My, my pleasure. Thanks. Anytime, guys. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. That was a special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Dr. Robert Marks Show. Guys, take care.